First off, I want to thank the uh, brave men and women who work behind the wall. I want to thank them on a national level because their job goes on How recognized. How do they try to turn a guard? Well, President, uh, correction officer, sorry, I apologize. Uh, but correction officer. Uh... How you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji, host of Tear Talk Guys. For this video, we're going to give out some tips for cell extractions. Now, my boy JC, that's what we're going to call him, gave me some tips. I'm going to read off these tips. I'm not going to paraphrase it because I don't want us to lose anything. I mean, these tips are phenomenal. I would actually go ahead and consider him an expert on cell extraction. JC, t thank you for taking the time and doing this. I asked you yesterday and you came through early this morning. I think that's awesome. I'm excited to showcase this video. So when we come back from our sponsors, I'm gonna read off what JC has given us. Now guys, it's general information, but with that said, maybe you could find a way to specifically apply that at your facility. These are great tips, and at the end of me reading off the tips, I have a 13-minute video I'm gonna attach to that, a video I found on YouTube that showcases a pretty good cell extraction into a restraint chair. I mean, the key here, and the reason why I created this video is about the liability side of things. And I wanna make sure that we understand that, how to maneuver. And again, JC wrote down a tremendous thing for me on Microsoft Word that I'm just gonna read off. And I would love your comments on this. I never covered this before, so I think it's the beginning of something new and great. And then I also think after I'm done presenting this video, then we can maybe do some videos on how these tips can be applied. Maybe share some stories. I'm hoping Russ will kind of pioneer that for me at first and see what comes along after that. So guys, we come back from our sponsors. We are gonna listen to, or. I'm gonna read off a list of tips that's coming from my boy JC, and then it's gonna go right into that video of Excel extraction. So, looking forward to it. Now guys, if you haven't, the show Tear Talks to you, you brave men and women that work in correction, so please, subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell's gonna notify you every time I post a video. Stand by for our sponsor. I wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program. I wanted to look at problems different. I wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities. AMU offered those avenues to expand. Obtaining your degree as an adult, you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself. You can't put a dollar on it, it's priceless. It's something that can never be taken away from you. American Military University, learn from the leader. I right, thank you guys for listening to our sponsor. JC, thank you again. I think these are great tips to provide to my audience. And guys, remember when this is done and I read through the tips, we're gonna do a video of a cell extraction. This is about 13 minutes. It's a cell extraction into a restraint chair and it's coming from a high security prison in Maine. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I thought it was a good video, very professional. Um, and guys, when we read through these uh, tips for the cell extraction, I really hope this thing you know, get some comments going. I'm very curious to see what your thoughts are. And also, Russ, please, if you can, maybe you could pick up on some of these tips and explore it a little bit more in depth with a video. I would appreciate that. So real quick, some cell extraction tips. There are multiple steps to do to ensure that a cell extraction is not going to bring you and your team to the losing end of an administrative, criminal, or civil decision. All cell extractions should be understood that the situation is going to be violent and the team should be the team should understand that it's just business and never personal. That's key, just business and never personal. The goal is to complete the law enforcement objective. First tip, prepare and train. You should have the right team makeup to successfully complete cell extraction. So what should the team have? First, the team should have a shield person, right? Now the shield should be strong, solid with a good base. Your shield officer should be fearless as he or she is the protector of your team. The shield uh, is a powerful weapon and the officer should be very comfortable utilizing as both a blocking and striking tool. The shield should be curved outward for any extraction. Then you have the left and right arms, otherwise known as the number two and three officer. The number two and three officer should be athletic, knows how to strike and should be equipped with a set of handcuffs that do not come out into play until the inmate is being compliant. Handcuffs being secured on an uncompliant inmate can become a weapon against the extraction team. This team will most likely utilize the most of the force during the extraction in regards to strikes. The two and three officers should attempt to de-escalate the combative inmate by utilizing hand strikes to the ribs and body area. Any inmates who get multiple strikes to the body and ribs will soon lose the ability to properly keep their wind and surrender to the team so the inmate can be secured in handcuffs. Please note that the body and ribs do not bleed and do not swell as the head and face do. Less serious bodily injuries and a chance of blood exposure. 
Left and right legs. Now we go to the number four and five officer. The number four and five officer should be equipped with a set of leg irons that do not come out into play until the inmate is being compliant. Leg irons being secured on an uncompliant inmate can become a weapon against the extraction team. This team will most likely utilize the most of the force during the extraction in regards to strikes. The four and five officers should attempt to de-escalate the combative inmate by securing the inmate's legs to the ground. If the inmate is on his feet, these officers should attempt to grab the legs and lift to get the inmate onto the ground. Every effort should be made to have the inmate stop resisting and comply with the extraction team. Once the inmate is face down, the legs can be secured in a safe manner. The leg iron should be applied. Please note, then the officer's knee to the inmate's middle calf as the officer turns the inmate's foot outward is an acceptable and proven way to get the inmate to comply. There's almost no physical damage that can be caused by this method, but it's good use of pain compliance. Number two, let's talk about the right equipment and proper use of it. You should ensure that you have the correct equipment. Cameras camera you should ensure that the camera is fully charged and has a new sd card in it the camera supervisor should protect his team or her team by ensuring that the widest angle is filmed of the extraction so that all events can be filmed from wall to wall a video that does not show the full view of the extraction the identification of its team from start to final placement can only raise doubt to the monday morning quarterbackers that will be there to pick apart and find possible fault in the good but dangerous work that the extraction team conducted we also need oc the OC should be at least a level two at 58% and should be utilized uh, before the extraction team enters. The OC should be given the proper time to work and the supervisor should allow from three to five minutes for full effect. An addition burst should be deployed over the shield when the door opens directly into the inmate's face upon the team's entry. Nothing hits harder than OC as a supervisor ensure that the OC is not only sprayed onto the inmate's face and body, but into the air. The extraction team must be equipped properly so they have minimal effect from the OC. Now the team should be equipped with Tyvek suits that are clearly numbered on their backs and one of the team should be delegated as the team captain from the supervisor before the extraction occurs. One of the five officers that has direct contact must be able to direct the extraction team and give orders and relay the orders to the supervisor in charge of the extraction. The Tyvek suits are what protect us from bodily fluid and OC. Just to give it out there. Three, four, and five. Everyone has a role. Now, guys, structures are going to differ from facility to facility, but in this case, the rank and structure, we're going to start from the area lieutenant on down. The area lieutenant should be present and responsible for the entire extraction from start to finish. The lieutenant should assist the supervisor in charge of the extraction team as there's always audibles that occur during an extraction. The lieutenant should ensure that the team is prepared, the right equipment is in use, and authority for the extraction is received, and the sergeant is knowledgeable of all the IMPs and ready to confidently carry out the law enforcement objective. The supervising sergeant should ensure that the extraction team has the correct equipment, the OC and the warning to the inmate, and the introduction of the, of the team is properly carried out. The camera supervisor should ensure that the camera has the proper battery life and the SD card is new, that the video recording is from wall to wall, and that the extraction recording shows the entire process from start to finish. The officer opening the door should never open the door until ordered by the area lieutenant, as all proper procedures are adhered to. The officer observing the inmate in the cell should direct all information to the area lieutenant from the time the extraction is ordered to the breach of the door. This officer should relay the information that the inmate is doing to prepare for the extraction, such as but not limited to oiling up his or her body, putting cover on his face to block the OC, putting substances on the floor to use as barricades or to ensure less traction, and if there's weapons of any kind. Now, the area lieutenant should ensure that the power and the ward of its cell is off. If the team needs more light due to the darkness of the cell, emergency lighting can be placed on the outside of the cell. If the inmate has any type of weapon that is deemed to be able to be handled by the extraction team, the number two and three officers should be armed with batons and the inmate should be ordered to surrender the weapon or deadly force may be utilized. But remember, before deadly force is utilized, there may be a higher level authorization needed that goes outside of who's on site. If the weapon by the inmates are deemed not to be able to be handled by the extraction team, that's when you call the higher level authority. And then uh, you may have to have a CERT team get involved, including maybe some form of canine extraction. Every extraction is different. The cell, one, two, or more inmates, weapon sizes, genders, etc. The supervisors, teams, and the uh, the higher level authority must work together to ensure that the extraction, although an elevated situation, is completed in a safe manner, the custody staff is prepared, and the law enforcement objective is completed. All proper documentation to include play-by-play -play force of the extraction, identification of the team, supervisors and inmates, medical assessments and injuries, and use of force, and continuity of evidence. 
All correctional officers should have pride in their craft and one of the most dangerous but scheduled incidents is our cell extractions. Remember that there is no rush. You and your team have the advantage, the body armor, the OC, the numbers, the batons, the canine if needed. Remain professional, take a deep breath and enjoy the extraction. This is what you practice for. This is what you get paid for. Go do your job. Well said, my man, JC. I like the ending though. This is what you practice for. This is what you get paid to do. Go do your job. I thought this was tremendous advice. I would love to hear your thoughts. Again, I try to give you the best and I believe this really did come from the best. I have a lot of respect for this individual. Um, he truly is someone that has did some time. Let's just put it that way. And trust and believe he leads by example. He would not give an order if he wouldn't do it himself. And I have a lot of respect for that. Um, okay, guys, let me show you this video of the cell extraction that's coming out of Maine. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. As always, stay safe. Don't forget, please subscribe, interact, engage, comment. You know, hit that bell. Bell's going to notify every time I post a video. Stay safe. And if you get a chance, use this for training. Promote. Tear talk. Come on, guys. Help me out. As always, guys, love you. They're sent cause to watch on him. Um, he was ordered to pull his arms back in through the door. He wouldn't do it. In through the tray slot. He wouldn't do it. He was given several warnings and he was maced by officer. Um, then the tray slot was secured. Uh, this is after he was able to pull officer's arm in the door and officer did sustain an injury. We're going to go down. He's threatening to hang himself. We're going to go down. If he's up on his bunk or anywhere trying to hang himself, at the time we're getting down there, we're going to tell him to get down. If not, we're automatically going in. Otherwise, we're going to go through the whole routine of giving him an opportunity to cuff up. <clears throat> and uh, so you guys be real careful. He's dangerous. He's wound up. He's having to try to come over the top of you, try to get up on your face shields. Protect yourself from that. Okay? Slow. We'll take our time with this. Officer you're number one, one man. Do you understand your responsibilities? Yes. Officer, you're number two man. Do you understand your responsibilities? Yes. Officer, you're number three man. Do you understand your responsibilities? Yes, sir. And officer, do you understand your responsibilities? Yes. Okay. You have the light irons. Yes. A whole lot of these till we get there. Um. Anything I'm forgetting? He will be coming out to the restraining chair. By the way. Okay. All right, let's go. I'm going to release it. Everybody set?
I got a nine to cuss on. You go walk, you need to be careful. I'm walk. Stand him up. <coughs> Fucking kill you! I'll fucking kill you, motherfuckers! 
Thank <clears throat> you. 